Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to episode number 69 of TempleCast. This podcast is our way of staying connected in this time of increasingly perpetual pandemic. We hope that all you Temple friends are doing your part to protect your health and the health of those around you. Today on the podcast, we'll hear readings and prayer for Wednesday, December 9th. We'll begin with this selection from the Book of Common Prayer. To you we come, radiant Lord, the goal of all our desiring. Beyond all earthly beauty, gentle protector, strong deliverer. In the night you are our confidence, from first light be our joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We'll now turn to our reliable Advent companion, Isaiah. This section of the book recounts Isaiah's prophetic call. It comes from chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Here is another prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. O God, teach us to seek security, not in money or theft, not in human ambition or malice, not in our own ability or power, but in you, the only God, our rock, and our salvation. Wait on God alone in stillness, O my soul. Amen. And continuing now from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, we'll hear verses 8 through 13. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away, and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remains in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. Here is a prayer for hearts that are attuned to the word of the Lord as spoken through prophetic voices. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And finally, this day, we'll hear the well-known story of the woman caught in adultery from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 2 through 11. Early in the morning, Jesus came again to the temple. 
All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Michael Card is a very talented musician who happens to be a follower of Jesus. He has written some of the most well-known songs in contemporary Christian music, El Shaddai for one, along with Emmanuel, along with many, many others. I saw Michael Card in concert once. He played five instruments during the course of the one hour and 15 minute show. I knew what three of those instruments were. He explained the other two, but I don't remember their names. I'd never seen anything like them before, but he could play them. At one point in his career, Michael Card wanted to deepen his study of the New Testament scriptures. So, you know, like anybody might do, he taught himself Koine Greek the ancient and dead language that the New Testament was written in. Reading the New Testament in the original language yielded many new insights for him. This was particularly true for the Gospel of John. So much so that Card wrote a book about it in which he offers his translation of the Gospel along with meditations on various stories. I loved Card's reflection on the incident that is recounted in the passage above, the woman caught in adultery. Card focused on the seemingly tossed-off detail of Jesus bending down to write on the ground with his finger. Why would John mention such a detail? In fact, he mentions it twice. Now, I always thought that Jesus bent down and drew random figures on the ground with the goal of taking attention off of the woman. Jesus was gracious like that, especially toward those who were condemned by others. But Card suggested another option. What if Jesus wrote not just random figures, but words? Perhaps, suggested Card, Jesus was listing the names of the men gathered there. By the way, where was the man with whom they caught this woman? Why was he not publicly shamed? And then next to the name of each man, as Jesus wrote that on the ground, Jesus might have been writing a sin, like adultery or violating the Sabbath or something like that. So that as Jesus challenged them all to cast the first stone, they could look at the ground where Jesus had listed each of their names along with their secret sin, or what they thought was a secret sin. As I may have hinted earlier, I have my doubts about this scenario. However, I do think it's worth considering even if it didn't happen exactly like this. The fact is that Jesus, being God in the flesh, would have known the secret sins of everyone there. Some of them, no doubt, even worse than the one committed by the woman who they were attempting to execute. And even with that knowledge, Jesus was still ready to offer them grace. He doesn't condemn the woman, of course, but note that he doesn't condemn any of the woman's accusers either. Those men probably didn't notice that Jesus had treated them graciously. The only thing they could embrace as a response to sin was condemnation. Jesus showed them that condemnation was not the best response and not at all the one that God chooses. The man apparently didn't stick around to see what ultimately happened. Jesus doesn't stand up again until everyone is gone and he is alone with the woman. He then pardons her sin by refusing to engage in condemnation like the others did. But he does more. He says to the woman, go now and leave your life of sin. I like to read that line as, go now and be freed from your life of sin. That makes it sound less like a command and more like permission. Like he did with the woman in our scripture, when Jesus sets us free from human condemnation, he does it by opening up a new possible future, a future in which we are set free to live according to the law of love 
as opposed to the law of sin and death. As Jesus himself says just a few verses later in chapter 8 of John's Gospel, if the Son of God sets you free, you will be free indeed. Thank you for listening. Temple Church continues to meet for worship on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. at the corner of Temple and Unionville Roads in North Coventry, Pennsylvania. For those who cannot or should not attend in person, our worship service is posted online as soon as possible after it is done. You can find all our services on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. You can also find every episode of this podcast going back to March of 2020 on those same pages. New episodes of this podcast are posted every Wednesday at 6 a.m. on both Facebook and YouTube. Until next time, grace and peace to all. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Oh, for Pete's sake.